Speaking of first, Beth Moens has been covering sports for over 20 years, but last Monday she shattered the glass ceiling in the play-by-play -play booth, becoming the first female broadcaster to call a nationally televised NFL game. She'll be in the booth again this Sunday, calling the game between the Cleveland Browns and the Indianapolis Colts on CBS. She sat down with my colleague, Rena Ninen. Rivers dumps it off to Gordon underneath, launching for the goal line and in. Touchdown, Los Angeles. It's not just that you smashed a glass ceiling. You smashed an incredibly thick glass ceiling. I mean, why do you think it is that it took so long to have someone here full time, a woman calling the play by play? You know, I, I think it's a. I've always approached play by play as, as a craft and as a very particular skill set that. Quite honestly, not a lot of people want to do. It's a small fraternity and sorority that you really, you know, I think of that 10,000 hour rule. You really have to put a lot of time in from a very young age. You really have to want it. Quite often it entails going out to small town USA and getting a lot of reps and sort of moving up, you know, steps of the ladder. Um, and so it's, it's a industry, I think, where you have to have a lot of patience and you have to have a lot of confidence. And quite honestly, you can't really have a fallback position. Um, you know, when I was making $19,000 a year living in a, you know, a one bedroom uh, apartment, um, if there was something else I wanted to do, I probably would have gone and done it. Whereas I, I knew this was it and I was willing to put up with a lot to um, be patient and wait for my opportunity. You know, I grew up in Tampa, Florida, Gail, and, and Gail Sirens yes. was an anchor there mm -hmm. in Tampa, and she was the first woman 30 years ago to call an NFL play-by-play, -play, 1987. Are you surprised that it's taken 30 years to come back? I guess probably a little bit. Um, I think one of the things that when I, you know, I got to know Gail um, over the years and, and uh, talked to her actually before the Monday night game and, and before um, my CBS debut, and... Um, she was surprised because the landscape, there weren't a whole lot of other women coming up through the ranks, really a handful um, in those days. And I'm, you definitely have to earn that opportunity regardless of your gender. And so the hope now is, you know, in talking to Gail and, and moving forward, you already see more women pursuing the play-by-play -play role and, and moving up through the ranks. And so hopefully it won't take as long after um, you know, n now that I have uh, had this opportunity. A CBS sports executive said something, the equivalent of, it's not that she's a woman, that she's in this position, mm -hmm. it's that she's just the best damn play-by-play -play announcer, period. Are you, is it difficult that there's so much attention placed that you're a woman? I have come to embrace it because just talking with younger uh, women out there, moms and daughters that may come up to me before a game, but also talking with other women in the industry um, that have an appreciation and a respect for what this job all entails. It, that's been somewhat eye-opening, and, and so I've kind of embraced that a little bit more. Uh, but honestly, I've always looked at myself as a play-by-play -play announcer, and I've been calling the NFL since I was about eight years old in my living room. Eight so years old? It's not new to me. It's just <laughs> new to everybody else. And, and I'll, I'll let other people deal with any historical significance. My focus is on, you know, I, I want to do a good job for all of the people that have been there over the years to support me. When you look at the NFL, there's been an increase in the number of females, women, mm -hmm. who are watching. What do you make of that? I, I think that's a natural progression from Title IX back in the early 70s and a generation of, of young girls that have watched their mom play sports and their sister play sports, and now they have a, had a chance to grow up playing sports, viewing sports, being sports fans. I mean, that's all I, I've known in my lifetime, and, and most of my friends are sports fans and, and played sports. So I think it's a natural progression from Title IX and having opportunities throughout their lives to now have a chance to stay in the game and stay in the NFL. We've got a situation tonight. It is a tone-setting moment for a couple of new guys in the league as uh, two new head coaches embark on their NFL careers. When I was doing some research on your background, I was surprised at everybody talking about your voice. What, you have an amazing voice. <laughs> what is up with the criticism over the voice? And how did you rise above it? I, um, 
you know, I, I really haven't tried to pay too much attention to it. I, I do get a lot of where in the South did you grow up, kind of Reba McIntyre-ish, and I tell them I'm from upstate New York, and they look at me kind of sideways. Um, I, you know, that's beyond my control other than, you know, trying my best to keep a strong voice and to make sure I drink a lot of water and to do my exercises to do for got pop boy, you know, before I go on the air, <laughs> things like that. Um, but it is what it is. And I, I just, I, I tell people, if you haven't heard a woman calling sports before, give it a quarter, give it a half and listen to the language and listen to the call as best you can and not be distracted by who it is that's, that's doing the talking. Looking ahead to the, the Colts and the Browns mm -hmm. this Sunday, what are you watching for? I think it's a couple of teams that are both desperate for wins and to sort of change the course of their season. They're, they're off to slow starts. So I, I think first and foremost, we're looking to, at the two quarterbacks. Uh, one, a young guy um, who uh, took some lumps last week in Deshaun Kaiser for Cleveland. And on the other side, Jacoby Brissett for the Colts, who has been around a few years and is now finally getting that opportunity. Had a nice game last week until the very end and then a, a very costly turnover. So I think first and foremost, we're watching and their teammates and, and the fan bases, I think, are watching. How are those two guys going to respond to difficult moments last week to try and bounce back this week? Beth Mowens, I love the fact that you talked about the 10,000 hours that you need to put in. <laughs> You've probably put in well more than yeah. that. <laughs> probably past that now. Well past that. Well, well past that. Thank you for joining us, Beth. Thank you. Yeah.